Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the PFN Fantasy Podcast. I'm Theo Ash. Alongside me, I got Kyle Soppy. How are you doing, Soppy? I'm doing well. We're moving on to week four. I can't believe how fast this is going. We're almost in October already. We've got three data points as far as games for everybody. We've got bye weeks coming up. That's not something we need to deal with quite yet, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. I hate dealing with bye weeks, so one more week where we get 16 games. I'm ready for week four. How about you? I am also ready for week four. I feel like bye weeks, I, I always forget about those Go, going into the season. When I do my drafts, I'm always just picking the players I like, and then I'm like, oh, man, the the bye weeks. I am not – that's the last frontier for me. I feel like uh, being on this show, I, I feel like I've realized some things about fantasy. I've become a better player. Okay. I had some pretty good drafts, but but then the final frontier for me, the last piece of the puzzle to round out my game is uh, realizing when bye weeks are and when they aren't. See, it's funny. There's two trains of thought there. I tend to not view it all that heavily because it's it's like trying to do strength the schedule. Like, I don't know what the Chiefs defense is going to look like in week 11. So why am I trying to project what they are? So if you draft good players, you should be in a good shape. And hopefully we're here to set you up to do that at a higher rate than normal. That's right. That's right. We got some news to kick off this episode. Christian McCaffrey was photographed at an airport going to Munich. Not for vacation either. They asked Kyle Shanahan about it. He said that he's going to see some specialist. Shanahan seemed uh, unclear on exactly what the specialist was going to do for McCaffrey, but he just said that he hopes that it helps. Um, If you're going overseas to get your Achilles looked at, it probably isn't good for your (laughs) the health of your foot. Um, What do you what do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a wait and see approach, but those people that picked up Jordan Mason a few weeks ago are feeling like they got the number one overall pick for free. Not that he's McCaffrey, but he's been a high, high volume option in the San Fran offense that we think is going to be better with time. Jordan Mason looks like the real deal. I get that he struggled last week, but he's still getting the volume. I still trust this offense to be efficient. Brandon Ayuk isn't going to be this bad forever. Chris, or, uh, George Kittle and Debo Samuel will be back eventually. This team doesn't go on by until week nine. If McCaffrey's in freaking Germany here as we're approaching October, I can't imagine he's back anytime in the short future here. Kobe Bryant, I get that he had the the Germany procedures, whatever they do over there, and he came back better than ever. So maybe this gives me a little bit of optimism for the stretch run, but I don't know if you have McCaffrey at this point, if you're if the stretch run's going to matter. I don't know if your fantasy team's going to be playing late into December here. It's a net positive, I suppose, but... I trying to get a timeline on this guy seems like it seems like a fool's errand at this point. Yeah, it's disappointing. It had it had been since week one, right? He was questionable. It didn't seem yeah. that bad, and then it's over, right? And maybe not over, but IR. That's that's about as bad as it gets. Instead of just being out for the whole season, I guess. Man, it, there's not much to say about it other than it's unfortunate, and it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. There's another injury we got to talk about. Adam Thielen. uh, I think he banged up his hamstring catching a a phenomenal touchdown pass from Andy Dalton. That was an absolute laser. But in catching the pass, Thielen hurt his hamstring. Are you targeting any of the other Panthers wide receivers for these next few weeks looking at Dalton? This is this is your chance, right? You were all on Leggett. Let's get the Leggett bus going. I guess you could add him now where he's free of charge. And if he goes bananas in a good matchup with the red hot red rifle right now, then yeah, then maybe you're getting a free addition to your team as opposed to one that's going to cost you a significant waiver wire priority or a fab bid on Monday. But I guess that's an option to me. This just increases the value of Deontay Johnson. I mean, we saw him go off with a 38% target share last week. He he scored. He was doing a little bit of everything with Dalton under center. We know that's what Johnson can do. He came over to Carolina with the reputation of being a route running specialist, a target earner that can do it at all three levels. He proved that, and Dalton can get him the rock. I, I don't want to dismiss Bryce Young, but it really was that bad. So you bring in Dalton, and he looks like Joe Montana for a quarter. I don't know if that's going to continue, but... Cincinnati could stop anybody on Monday night. If that's going to be the case here, this is my pick for the highest scoring game of the week. And if that's the case, Deontay Johnson is going to be a top 15 guy. Yeah, I, I agree. This is a great week to stream some Panthers. The Cincinnati pass rush is abysmal. 
um, non-existent. It, it was the worst I've ever seen, I think, against the Washington Commanders last Monday. They had a 9% win rate in that game, Eesh. the pass rush. To, to give that some context, the Atlanta Falcons have the lowest pass rush win rate on the year at 23%. So to be in the single digits is crazy. Yeah. The Panthers' offensive line, I'm actually pretty impressed with, especially that right side. You got Robert Hunt, you got Moten. I know that that's not really where Hendrickson's lines up, which is your main threat. But if you chip that guy, I think Dalton is going to have time. He's got confidence. He's not phased by the speed of the NFL level like yeah. Bryce Young was. He's confident, standing back there, protected pretty well, firing off, you know, dimes left and right. So. I don't think Cincinnati is going to bother him. I think eventually some team probably will, and and Andy Dalton will probably struggle. But I think against Cincinnati, they they really have a have a chance to put some points up on the scoreboard. So I'm interested in the get. I'm interested maybe in a little bit of Tommy Tremble Ooh, at the tight know. end at that tight end position. He he got three targets and, and caught kind of an explosive one up the seam. Maybe he gets worked into the target share a little bit more with with Thielen out Thielen caught a lot of passes beating the blitz last game as well maybe they they the tight end becomes the new outlet for that I don't know but yeah I'm 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 actually kind of bullish on the Panthers all of a yeah. sudden at least for this week yeah for this week let's let's touch on that a little bit moving forward you talked about this offensive line you're the better tape guy than I am with when it comes to offensive line and when it comes to college prospects Jonathan Brooks, a lot of people are holding his mm. stock on their IR. They're waiting. I was ready to punt on the idea of Brooks being at all viable this season with Bryce Young under center because his offense wasn't moving the ball. They weren't crossing midfield. They weren't in scoring position. So even if you're giving me a 65% workload, which I kind of think is the ceiling for Brooks coming off the ACL, I don't think he's going to be a, a Mason kind of guy in San Fran where he's getting every single touch. But I do think he'll be the featured back when healthy. If this offensive line's moving in the right direction and Andy Dalton's adding a level of potency in the passing game, could Jonathan Brooks, you think, be a top 24 guy down the stretch when fantasy leagues are being decided? Man, it's tough to say. The thing that makes me lean no is I think Chuba Hubbard is running pretty well right now. Sure. I think it's going to be tough for a rookie to come in and beat him out 5.4 yards per carry last game 6.4 against the chargers he is playing with a downhill attitude right now i think his vision is pretty impressive he's setting people up and then putting his foot in the ground getting straight north and south getting what he can breaking some tackles i i, I like the mentality that hubbard has got right now i think if you were to add brooks to the lineup I don't think that means any more Miles Sanders, or nor should yeah. it. Like I, I don't want to see him. But to supplant Hubbard the way he's going right now, I don't know if it'll happen. But mm -hmm. thinking that far into the future, like who knows how it could shake out. But I do think that if anything were to happen to Hubbard, yes, you would want Brooks very badly. But I think that Hubbard kind of has started to establish himself as a as a real threat in this offense. Okay, that's fair. I've got my eyes on this week 16 matchup with the Cardinals. I just want the starting <laughs> running back in that game for Carolina. If it can be Brooks, great. If it's going to be Hubbard, I mean, you're talking about a guy that could be top 15 and wasn't drafted as anything close to that, and he could decide leagues. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Speaking of running backs, we have got some more injuries to talk about. Najee Harris has an arm injury. Jalen Warren has a knee injury. Are you looking at Cordero Patterson? I think you have to, right? I mean, Arthur Smith brings him over for a reason. You get the Colts that gave up over a buck fifty on the ground to Mixon and Josh Jacobs. I get that they were successful last week, if you want to call it that. But the Bears, that to me, last week was more proof positive that the Bears can't run on anybody more than it was the Colts have solved the running defense. So there's that. There's the viral images of the whole offensive line being on the ground and the Colts chasing Swift like that. <laughs> that's a mess that's a problem for chicago indy's still vulnerable if you can tell me not only is patterson getting work but we're clearing the two guys that are in his way of getting touches why wouldn't we think that this could be a 15 touch cordero patterson game and if that's going to be the case you're looking at probably 80 yards and some scoring upside against a bad defense and against an offense quite frankly that's either going to move the ball in a hurry or punt and that's kind of the ideal situation for opposing offenses India, great target right now. And if Patterson's not facing any role competition, he's going to move into my top 30 at the position without much of a question. And I I think I'd be starting him in all, all formats. Really? 
I think so. I mean, it, the running back position gets so ugly in such a hurry. I yeah. mean, everybody that's banged up. I mean, Rashad White, who I'm trending down on in a big way, still inside my top 25. Zach Charbonnet is mm-hmm. running back 25. From, I don't even know if Kenneth Walker's playing or not. If he does, <laughs> you got to move him out of there. Hubbard's in that range. Carson Steele's in that range. There's, yeah. there's a lot of uncertainty there. So if you're telling me you lock in touches to a run-centric offense, you can sell me on it. Yeah, I get that. It sounds like Najee Harris is going to play, even though he was seen in a sl- with his arm in a sling. Uh, Jalen Warren has, I think, a couple issues with his lower body, so I think that's more up in the air. The Steelers have only scored a hand, even though they're three and zero. They've only scored what three touchdowns on offense this year. So yeah, been bad. we'll see. I'm I'm a little bit like I I don't know if I need Cordero Patterson, but. You're right about the touches thing, and you're right about the running backs thing, where there's just not a lot of great options out there. Patterson, and just at the big, at the big year of 2024, it's <laughs> tough. <laughs> it's tough to get me on it. I, I, I don't know. It's Arthur Smith. He's out to give us problems. I'm trying to get ahead of him giving us problems. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, in some Packers news, Jordan Love is back to practice, but he's got a tough matchup against the Minnesota Vikings if he does play. It is at Lambeau. Um, maybe he'll get a little bit of home field advantage. He'll be comfortable with the the turf, hopefully. If you are a Jordan Love fantasy owner, you've obviously been starting someone else these last two weeks. Who knows who it is? Now that Love is potentially returning, um, do you think that he'll deliver maybe top 10 quarterback value this week? Or do you think it might be better to keep him on the bench until we know? I think it's got to be a wait and see approach. Top 10 numbers the rest of the way you could sell me on. Top 10 numbers right now in this matchup against the Vikings. I'm I'm not overly sold on it. You've got some matchups down the board here that intrigue me more. You've got, I mean, Dak Prescott's not really too far down the board, but he's got the Giants on Thursday night. You've got Baker Mayfield going against an Eagles defense. It looked good last week, but I don't think we're getting there with them quite yet. Derek Carr's on a fast track against Atlanta. Sam Darnold in the same game is playing lights out right now. Might be the MVP through the first three weeks of the season. Justin Fields trending up in that same matchup we were talking about with the Colts. So to me, I think there's enough depth at the position that you can wait and see. You, you're you not, I mean, if you needed to go Andy Dalton, like it's not the end of the world there. Geno Smith gets Detroit. I could go on and on. If you, you've you been replacing Jordan Love for the past couple of weeks, I think you're fine to go with that replacement option for one more week to make sure that he's got his wits about him here. We thought this might be a, you know, a month, month and a half injury. Not the case. So they could be rushing him back to some degree. And Malik Willis played well. But I, it's a wait and see approach for me. But I'm still bullish on the season as a whole. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair way to put it. I think Dalton, he's almost certainly on waivers, I'd say. Maybe not certainly, but someone like that against the Bengals, I could totally see starting him over Jordan Love coming off an injury. They've been running the ball so well. The Vikings defense has done such a good job against some really high-end quarterbacks these last few weeks. Maybe LaFleur's solution is, I'm going to skip Harrison Smith, I'm going to skip Metellus. I'm going to skip, you know, dropping back yeah. against yeah. <laughs> and and just keep on leaning on the run game that's been so effective for me. There's a lot of things that could go wrong in this matchup. So I, I, I'm kind of with you there, the wait and see approach. Another quarterback we got to talk about. I don't know where he is in your rankings at this point. I am wondering, Anthony Richardson obviously exploded week one, oh, pretty man. quiet these last two weeks. Where you got him uh, stacked up in the in the hierarchy here? Pretty quiet over the last two weeks, man. You are you're on his <laughs> PR team if you're calling him pretty quiet. He hasn't been a top I am. twenty I, quarterback I am on his PR team over the last two weeks. We saw the potential in week one, but man, has this gone sideways in a hurry? I still think the physical tools and all that stuff. He's healthy. I mean, in theory, the the thought coming into the season was as long as it is healthy, he's a pseudo cheat code for our fantasy game because of how we value running at the position. But that just hasn't proven to be the case I mean he's got right now two of the five worst receivers in terms of points over expectation that's because he's just taking shots and when they don't hit they don't hit but when they hit it's it's Alec Pierce and he's number one over expectation so do with that do with that what you will but this is not the spot to get right eventually he's going to put up another bonker stat line I don't doubt that there's going to be a game this year where he could do what he did in week one or do what Jaden Daniels did on Monday night he has that in him I don't doubt that in the least but you're talking about a Steelers defense 
that's number one in first downs, number one in third down conversion rate, number one in touchdowns, number one in red zone defense. Like, I, I, I got a screen full here. You can't see the screen, but a screen full of <laughs> stats where they're top five. They are one of the best to do it right now. And I don't get how you can have any confidence in running Anthony Richardson out there other than you just not having another option. He's quarterback 14 for me this week. If you would have told me that was going to be the case at any point this season, I would have called you crazy, let alone in September. But I, I, he's not my quarterback one in this game. Give me Justin Fields against a bad mm. defense trending in the right direction. And for whatever reason, maybe unlocked by Arthur Smith with the completion percentage and all that stuff. I'll go Justin Fields. I'll, I'll put that on record. Justin Fields over Richardson this week. I'm still bullish on Richardson for the season. Just week four is a tough sell. Yeah, the Steelers' defense is not the get-right game. They're going to be loading the box. They're going to get after a TJ Watt. Cameron Hayward looks fantastic so far this year. High Smith on the other side. They're going to get pressure. I think Richardson needs to run more, honestly. Yeah. I, I yeah. think he is doing really well in terms of not taking sacks for all of his flaws this year. That has always been the thing that he's excelled at. Is like He is actually looking to scramble to throw. He is looking to step up and throw. He's looking to read the field, I think. It's just that he's not very accurate. <laughs> and uh, So if you're looking to throw and you're not that good at throwing, it's like, yeah, man, just just take off. You've, you've got it in you. But he's trying to avoid the injury. I think that this mentality could maybe pay off for him in the long run. We'll just see how long that run is and how short his leash gets. Yeah, I need Theo. I need fantasy points now. I don't yeah. care about 2027. <laughs> I need the fantasy points now. He has a lower out of pocket passer rating than Bryce Young this season. Like I get <laughs> the mobility is strong and everything, but if play to your strengths, if you're going to be mobile and get outside of the pocket, just tuck it because nobody in the NFL can tackle you one on one. Everybody in the NFL can defend you throwing the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He has 15 throws out of the pocket as well which ranks 20th in the league right now. Derek Carr has more throws outside Eesh. the pocket. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett has more throws outside the pocket. This guy, Anthony Richardson, is a pocket passer. People don't want to hear it, but it's true, and maybe he shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, he definitely he should shouldn't be. be. He shouldn't be a passer right now. <laughs> he, he should be just tucking and running and embracing that part of him, and it'll open everything up. The more success he has the on the ground, Alec Pierce is going to be far more wide open downfield. We need him on that Navy yeah, diet. yeah, he'd be so good. He'd be undefeated with Navy. <laughs> we touched a little bit on Anth Andy Dalton already versus Cincinnati. It's here in the rundown. I think we've already gotten to it. So I'm going to move on to some of the running back rankings here. How are you feeling about Zach Moss in Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, the offense isn't the problem with the Bengals right now. They're 0-3, but their offense is, I don't want to say humming, but it certainly was on Monday night. Zach Moss, we thought would be a timeshare kind of thing with Chase Brown. It's not. He's playing 80% of the snaps. He's shown nice versatility. He's getting the dangerous touches. Like He's checking all the boxes, and he's part of an offense that you want exposure to. And, I mean, this team is struggling, but this could be one of the rare instances where it's a positive game script against Carolina, who, you know, I get that they lit up the Raiders last week, but not every. that's not going to happen every single week. Carolina fifth worst when it comes to defending the run before contact. If Moss is getting running room and they're afraid of Burrow taking off the top with Jamar Chase, I could see another big Moss week. He's a top 15 guy for me, and that's about as high as I've had him this season. It, it might be his peak, but it, I, I like him for week four. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Um, I feel like some of the efficiency rankings I've got my, my eyes on because Chase Brown has looked good when he has gotten oh, the yeah. ball. He's second in elusive rate right now of guys with over a hundred rushing yards. Um, hasn't had a lot of negative plays. Neither of these guys have, um, he's broken off some long r r runs, but Zach Moss, like you said, it's, it's a 75 25 split here yeah. and Zach Moss hasn't been bad as well. I guess the only thing I'd be worried about is like the Bengals are 0 three and maybe they'll just change something for the sake of, of changing Change. something yeah. and saying like, Hey, Chase Young in his limited touches, he's per performed pretty well. Maybe well, let's give him the rock a little bit more. We're 0 and three, like, let's just see. Um, but that's a tough thing to bank on. And like you said, uh, the money touches are going to Zach Moss. It's 11 red zone touches for Moss to one for Chase Brown. So that's what you're looking for, right? That's what you're looking for. Oh yeah. Moving on to the wide receivers, we talked a little bit about this last week, the Miami guys, Tyreek Hill, 
his value has taken a hit. Jalen Waddle is completely taken a hit. He might not even be a starter, but they're getting Tennessee this week. How do you feel about that specific matchup? Can Hill at least hold on to his wide receiver one status against this defense? Or is this, you know, going to be another struggle? Yeah, I mean, betting against Tyreek Hill is dangerous. I don't think he's going to be a wide receiver one, but that said, I get to hedge my bet because I'm going to say he's a wide receiver two and you're still starting him. So I get out of dodge that way. I do think the struggles are kind of going to continue here until we see the direction of this offense. There's rumors that Huntley could be starting, and that brings in a whole different factor because now you've got a mobile quarterback instead of Skylar Thompson, who we saw distribute the targets all over the place, which is what you want, I guess, if you're an NFL team. As fantasy managers, that's not what we want. We saw this be a concentrated offense in the highest order last season and to start this season with Hill and Waddle attracting all of the attention. If that's not going to be the case and the quality of targets going to drop, then, yeah, man, we're we're in a tough spot here. Waddle not a starter for me, regardless of the quarterback. I'm, I want change, like you were saying with Cincinnati. I think move to Huntley can only be a positive from what we saw last week. They scored three points, and like we said, they were gift wrapped on the six yard line. Like that, those three points weren't anything Miami did well. I, the my concern here is just raw volume. I don't mm-hmm. think either one of these teams wants to play a high pace, high volume game. They're both right now rank in the bottom half of the league when it comes to pace. And if you're t- talking Tyler Huntley, Snoop Huntley, he's going by these days, right? He's got the nickname on there against Will Levis. Neither one of these teams wants a high play count because that just opens up the door for more mistakes. So if we're talking low possession count, Tyreek Hill's barely inside my top 20. Jalen Waddell, not. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. This is actually kind of a rough matchup for for them. I know the Tennessee Titans are are 0-3. They're not the greatest team, but they're third in pass yards allowed per game. It's only 139, 5.4 net yards per attempt. Um, for this defense, only 14 first downs allowed per game. Um, they're good in goal to go, goal, goal to go situations. And we saw it in the playoffs last year. Legereus Snead did a pretty good job on Tyreek Hill. Uh, yeah. when he was with the chiefs, he would get up and, and just jam him right to the ground. So I, I don't really see how this, I mean, I can see how it's a big Tyreek Hill game. He catches a screen and takes it 90 He's yards Tyreek to the Hill. house. That's but, how it's a big Tyreek yeah, Hill game. Yeah, <laughs> but I can, this isn't a good situation at all like this is not a good matchup for him on the defensive side of the ball even if Tua was playing I think that they could give anybody problems this Tennessee sure. secondary that they spent so much money on yeah man I it's it's getting to the point where we're saying like Tyreek Hill maybe more of a wide receiver two or, or flex than than a lead game changer oh man it's not good it's not good no. another speedster Xavier Worthy versus the Los Angeles Chargers he has not really gotten going. Well, he had that first week where he, he broke a end around and there was a blown coverage for touchdowns. But he's been very quiet since. Are you expecting that to rebound at all? Or are you worried? I know he's a rookie. I know he's very small. Um, how are you feeling about him? Yeah, those rookie receivers sometimes take time to, to, to develop. And with him posting a wide receiver nine finish in week one, We kind of thought he was past that. And then Hollywood Brown's out for the year and it was wheels up. We were all excited about what he could do, but Patrick Mahomes' ADA continues to regress. This cover two thing is a real situation for the Chiefs. And they, I don't want to say they can't beat it because they're undefeated and they're the two-time reigning Super Bowl champion. So what they're doing is working. It's just not working for us. He, like I said, wide receiver nine in week one. He hasn't been a top 50 guy since. That's that's kind of what I think we're going to see from him moving forward. And this isn't a great spot. The Chargers playing better defense than I think any of us thought was possible coming into the season. And then their offense is just so stagnant. They want to control the ball. And that's only going to be amplified against a Chiefs team that, you know, you want to keep off the field. If Patrick, the only way the Chargers win this game is if Patrick Mahomes is a spectator for 35 or 40 minutes. And if that's going to be the case, Xavier Worthy is going to have a hard time paying this off because we already know he can't win targets at a high rate and if the volume if the play volume shrinks that that weakness only is higher and we're struggling yeah yeah it's it has not been more explosive at all this season for the kansas city chiefs did kind of shocked me i thought especially after week one when they had a bunch of big plays um this could be the best version of the chiefs that we've seen in their in their super bowl run i mean it really seemed like they they could be posed for something like that poised for something like that hasn't really 
been the case here. Um, they have really struggled against the quarters looks that they've gotten the two high shells and, and not, not just cover two, right? They only get two people to distribute deep routes and cover two and cover four. There are four people up there and that's, that's where they're really struggling. I feel like is, is against those looks. And it's something that the, that the chargers aren't going to be afraid to play. They're popping into zones, uh, all the time. I mean, they like to have Derwin rotating down, but if, it calls for it. They, he can be a nickel and someone else can be up top and, and doing that. So, yeah, I, th I think the Chargers can successfully put a roof on this and we'll see if is, – is Bosa hurt? I can't quite remember. If he – the left tackle situation for the Chiefs is also really messing them up where they can't quite yeah. drop back and and – look down the field for too too long because they've already benched their starter um they had problems all of last year with it as well it's it's still just as big of an issue khalil mack is looking really good this year yeah i i think the chiefs will will see more just kind of dinking and dunking from them they'll probably win dinking and dunking but still more dinking and dunking yeah winning is fine but that's not how xavier worthy gets paid <laughs> exactly Jackson Smith and Jigba, another name we got on this list. We are seeing him at Detroit on Monday Night Football. He's had a good season thus far. Um, just how high do you have him these days? I, yeah, I was ready to jump in the deep end last week after the 16 target showing against the Patriots, and I did. I jumped in, and you know what I did, Theo? I drowned. That didn't go so well. I don't. I, I want to talk to you about this receiving trio because I was ready to write off Tyler Lockett. He looks like he still got a little bit of juice. Maybe DK Metcalf is just the alpha of all alphas here. We knew he was that coming in to at some level, but with 50 yard catches in consecutive games, he and Geno Smith seem to have this nice connection right now. JSN kind of feels a little bit like early season, Chris Godwin from last season where Baker Mayfield's just extending the field and going to Mike Evans and kind of ignoring the other options. JSN had the spike game in week two, but are we going to see any more of that? Or are we looking at another sub five target game? And that's just not going to pay it off in the Geno Smith offense against Detroit. I don't know. They're, they're a team that plays a lot of man coverage. I don't think that they're quite like the Patriots where they famously double wide receiver ones and make your right. offense flow through the wide receiver too. I mean, if last year's indi any indication, this is the team you want to throw to your wide receiver one you know the most uh, the, the, this is a team that sure. frequently gets dunked on uh, mm -hmm. by top options so i think it is kind of matchup dependent i think if if it calls for it and there's you're seeing brackets on dk i do think that jsn is the guy that becomes um the offense there like like he was in week two against the patriots you uh if you're gonna throw somebody 10 targets not named dk metcalf it probably would be jsn over tyler lockett but tyler lockett like you said he is still very reliable uh in that week two matchup he won the game for them with a fantastic one-handed catch out in front of them like the guy isn't just going away in some crucial situations he's earned a lot of trust um that jsn maybe quite hasn't so i think it is going to continue to be frustrating between the two of them and in this game I think I would be betting more on DK Metcalf than either of them, but I don't think you can fully ring the the alarms about JSN. I think he looked uncoverable in the preseason through the first three weeks, like he has popped. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I could see him working more and more, but yeah, it's it's not as simple as like, oh, Lockett's not in the picture anymore. It's right. it's D, it's the DK and JSN's show. So. I think I think in this game, oh, I don't know where does he rank amongst all the wide receivers. It's tough to say. Uh, where do you have him? I've got him as a top thirty play. I'm still going to rank him over Lockett on a consistent basis. I've got him ahead of Xavier Worthy this week, as long as we're talking Worthy. I've got him yep. just behind Deontay Johnson. I, I do have him behind Tyree Kill, but the people behind Tyree Kill is uh, is growing here. Would you play him or Jamison Williams in this game? I would play Jamison Williams, I think. Okay. I've got him ranked back to back. So it's a close call for me. The The question for me in Detroit comes down to Sam Laporta, who's banged up right now. Yep. And those injuries having to wait to Monday night are just a big pain. If, if he sits, you could go Brock Wright, but I'm picking up Noah Fant right now to get ahead of that, to provide myself insurance, A, because I think he's a better player than Brock Wright, 
But B, I, I kind of liked what I saw from Fant last week, a 36% target share on first down. That doesn't happen by accident. I get that they've got a lot of options and that we're, we're complaining about JSN not being able to be fed. So Fant, you know, could fall victim to the same idea there. But I'm going to go Fant is my insurance to Laporta over Brock Wright. How do you feel about that? I agree. I agree. I think that um, Noah Fant is, is a decent tight end. Brock Wright is a blocker. Hey, that's why he gets paid. Um, Noah Fant never broke out. He never really justified the first round capital that he invested in. But I do think he has shown improvement over the course of his career and has turned into a pretty reliable weapon for the for the Seahawks. I'm, I'm definitely taking him over Brock Wright. I mean, Laporta can't even get targets in this offense anymore. Yeah, I, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Is he replacing a valuable role? I guess that's maybe it's a mm-hmm. better offense if Brock Wright's in there and just blocking. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's well, that's a scary thought, but yeah, maybe, maybe. But yeah, I'm going fan. Speaking of tight ends, last name we got on our rundown today, we got Pat Fryermuth. He had a pretty good game last week. Broke some tackles. Looked explosive. I thought um, he's got a matchup versus Indianapolis this week. What do you think about him? You know what I think about Pat Fryer? I think he's boring, and that's just fine at the tight end position. My man hasn't cleared 40 receiving yards in a game this season. That that sounds like a damning stat. You know what else is true? He's been a top 15 guy at the position all three of those weeks. It takes so little to be a top 15 tight end these days, and boring gets the, gets the bills paid. And if Justin Fields is going to be executing this offense in an efficient manner in a game that I think they control the ball, control the clock, and realistically – have the ball upwards of 40 minutes in this game, then Pat Fryermuth is going to give you another four catches, another 40 yards, and another top 15 finish, which isn't exciting, but is paying off at the position because there's a low floor for just about everybody. Yep. You just like the route tree that he's got, honestly. Like, he's always out running route valuable push. routes, right? It's yeah. It's... But he's getting, he's running the slants, he's running the outs, he's running hit. He's not their blocker. Like Darnell Washington is is very intriguing to me because of just how good he is at blocking. Friar Muth, it kind of frees up Friar Muth, I feel like, in these 12 personnel situations to be, uh, you know, more of a receiver when they've got a guy like that. So I, I think that just for the sake of him having that role and and having targets and having you know, some ability to make people miss that we saw last week. Um, yeah, it is, it is very unsexy. Maybe, maybe if someone takes it for granted, try to make a move, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't have too much to say about Friar Muth and that does it for the rundown this week. So you can find me on Twitter at the OASH NFL. On TikTok at the OASH NFL, given some breakdowns, you can find Kyle Soppy. Where where can we find you? I'm on the socials at Kyle Soppy PFN. I don't give you the the attitude of the great videos that Theo does. I just post box scores and graphics and stuff like that. So I'm not as exciting of a follow. But if you need your information, you need your articles, that's where I'll be. We've got the week preview coming up. We've got quarterback grades every single week. You want football data? We got you covered at PFN. I'll take care of you on Twitter again. Kyle Soppy, PFN. Soppy's Twitter page may not have my attitude, but it probably would win you more money. <laughs> it's the efficient follow. There you um, go. There you the go. eye test. Uh, with... <laughs> I'm the Pat Fryermuth of, uh, of Twitter, but we did go to the same college, so there's that. ASU? Pat Fryermuth? Oh, no, guy, no, 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 no. I thought you yeah. and me. Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> thinking of myself here Brett Fryermuth, he went to what Penn, Penn yeah, State maybe yeah, yeah. Lion. thought maybe Providence I see the shirt you've got on uh, sister went there ah uh, all right all right all right go Friars go Friars in multiple ways <laughs> that'll do it for this episode see you guys <laughs>